Ken Burns was on Morning Joe this morning reminding Americans how fragile our democracy is and how we need to not make arguments, but we need to tell stories of how democracy works, folks. Have a listen to this. There is no real choice this November. There is only the perpetuation, however flawed and feeble you might perceive it, of our fragile 249-year-old experiment or the entropy that will engulf and destroy us if we take the other route. When, as Mercy Otis Warren would say, the checks of conscience are thrown aside and a deformed picture of the soul is revealed. The presumptive Republican nominee is the opioid of all opioids, an easy cure for what some believe is the solution to our myriad pains and problems, when in fact with him you end up re-enslaved with an even bigger problem, a worse affliction and addiction, a bigger delusion, James Baldwin would say, the author and finisher of our national existence, our national suicide, as Mr. Lincoln prophesies. Do not be seduced by easy equalization. There is nothing equal about this equation. We are at an existential crossroads in our political and civic lives. This is a choice that could not be clearer. Well, everything Mm. you said jumped out at me, but I'm going to pull. Um, You said, do not be seduced. I think that's so important in in, in the age of the cult of Trump. But even more important, you use the word fragile. And I don't think people understand um, just how fragile our democracy is. Can you explain how easily it could be unraveled? Well, I think all you need to do is go back to say, and good morning, Mika, thank you for having me. You could go back to where in 1932 you'd want to be where Everything was great with ideas in politics, in in um, arts, in architecture, in movies, in painting, in music. Uh, there'd be no better place on the planet than Berlin. And the next January, not so much. And so what we learn from the study of authoritarianism, what we learn from the study of despots, is that these democratic institutions are fragile because the covenant of democracy is a new thing. We invented it. It said, well, you're not going to be a subject, you're going to be a citizen. And that requires some responsibilities. And we're going to build institutions in which we have to, just like driving down the road, we trust people aren't going to cross the line. Um, we need to trust each other. And folks, the, you know, we've been talking about this, uh, this whole thing of the rollback of democracy that could happen under Donald Trump. And Again, people say, no, we have the institutions, we have the judiciary, we have the Congress and the Senate, you know, things like this can't happen. But um, Donald Trump could do a lot of damage through executive orders. Um, And one of the things that he wanted to do last time, if you recall, was this. So this article is entitled PBS Chief. I wish I knew why Trump wanted to defund us. This is from March 27th of 2019. And it says, for the third year in a row, the Trump administration's proposed federal budget would zero out funding for the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. And PBS president and CEO Paula Kerger does not understand why. And folks, that's the the type of thing that you could get um, under another Trump administration. I mean, he didn't succeed then, but who's to say that he wouldn't try again? And through executive orders, he could could do some real damage to our economy and, and to our freedom of speech. He could order increased surveillance of journalists or media organizations under the guise of protecting national security. And that is the, the intimidation aspect of what he could do. By doing something like that, he could lead to people trying to self-censor themselves because they're afraid that uh, under the guise of national security that they could be thrown in jail or they could be investigated. Um, He could do things under, and he's talked about this as well, defamation and libel. He could issue executive orders to direct the Department of Justice to prioritize defamation cases involving the media. So there are a lot of things, folks, that he could do when it comes to executive orders. Uh, And he could also order the Federal Trade uh, Commission 
the Federal Communications Commission, or other regulatory bodies to investigate uh, media organizations, media companies. You know, he could order them to investigate CNN and MSNBC. I mean, there's a lot of damage, and I don't think people realize this, that he could do in a second administration to freedom of speech. And the whole aspect of it is intimidation, and it would have a chilling effect on what people could say about Donald Trump, or otherwise in a fear prosecution by the Department of Justice. But there's another clip. He said this too, folks. Have a listen to what else Ken Burns had to say. Critical, but also telling the more complicated stories of how democracies work, because <clears throat> dictators always say, look, I've got the easy solution. Here's, here's right. how we do it. We just take 15 million people and we get them out of here. And or we just stop uh, this, uh, the press, which is noisy over here, or we do that. And all of a sudden, people become yes. susceptible. Thomas Jefferson said it in the Declaration. All experience has shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable. He's saying, look, up the whole history of human beings, we have been subjects. We have been a sort of superstitious peasants under some authoritarian rule. Yes. And we're inventing this new thing. Thing, and you're going to have to be a citizen and they're going to be individual responsibilities obviously the first of which is vote and that's hugely important but also it requires being informed you know at the time of our revolution a film i'm working on right now we were reading thomas Paine. we were reading the walpole new hampshire wow. gazette we were getting reports from georgia people wanted to be informed now we just listen to what we want to hear and it reinforces how bad the other is and mm -hmm. and what we need to do is figure out a platform and i think both simone and jen were right that you need to start altering the narrative to get out to have conversations to make clear distinctions but also remind people of this fundamental responsibility that you bring up and that's why your your question is so central to the survival literally i think it's an existential moment the survival of our republic wow man i mean that's some pretty heavy stuff ken um but it's the the fear that i have the most it's it's not a matter of whether or not a Republican wins to me or a, or a Democrat wins. Sure, I'd like to see my guy win, but it's the, it's the democracy that I'm afraid of, folks. You know, the, the crumbling of democracy, the erosion of democracy, um, the watering down of democracy is really what, what bothers me the most. And um, I, I got to be honest with you, as we get closer to this election, my anxiety is like <laughs> through the roof. Um, yeah, it really is. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a pretty calm, sedate personality here. And I know if I'm feeling it, I, it's not just me. I, I know that Republicans are feeling it, especially today with the trial going on. Uh, the anxiety over this thing is just through the roof, you know, the election in general. But I think we've got to reinforce, like Ken said, we've got to look at what's important and democracy is important. It's not whether we get a Democrat or a Republican, it's democracy that's important. And he said, we have civil responsibilities to vote and to be informed about democracy and what it really means to America, folks. Um, and that statement about, we've been superstitious peasants for eternity. And I guess my point is, folks, that do we want to go back to any form of that? Do we want to go back to being superstitious peasants? I mean, a lot of us are here because we escaped that, right? That our parents and our previous generations have escaped that. Um, and we don't want to go back to any form of that whatsoever. And I think we have to ask uh, this question, folks. You have to ask yourselves, what will my candidate do for democracy, not what will they do for me or for my party? I think that's the central question here that we have to ask ourselves. Uh, no matter who's running, we have to push democracy first, country first, and the party has to come second. It has to come second. And uh, we can't confuse, I think in my final statement here, folks, I, I, I think that we can't confuse demagoguery 
over democracy and become superstitious peasants under another authoritarian ruler of any kind, folks. Till next time.